In this video, we're going to focus on how we can give a color code here based on the scale value. So for example, we have here this bracket, which would be the danger zone. And then we have here the green zone here, which is between the scale 4 to 14. And finally here, the lowest part here, which would be like a warning area from 0 to 4. So let's start to explore how to do this. So let's start to look how to add the background color on the canvas based on the scale values in Chart.js. So the first thing what we need is we need to get our default code, which you can find in chartjs3.com, getting started. And this link you can also find in the description box. Scroll down and just copy this entire chunk of code here. Once you did that, and if you want to understand what this code does, make sure you watch this video here that explains it all. So I'm going to paste this all in there, and then we'll cut out this title and put it in here. Save that, refresh, and there we are. So now we have a bar chart here. But I want to have like these highlighted colors at the side here, or these highlight the area, which is considered like a danger zone, a uh, safe zone, and a, maybe a perfect zone, something like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a plugin to assign or to draw in the canvas. So I'm going to scroll down here, and then I'm going to say in the options here, put a comma, say your plugins, and then we're going to give it a plugin name. And in this case, the plugin will be canvas background color nothing fancy just very descriptive why because it's easy to understand what it is so we're going to copy this and then i'm going to put in here now a this i'll just put in text like we'll call this the plugin block and then i'm going to say a constant the canvas background color equals and then i'm going to say your id and i'm going to put in that and although we won't be using it this is just an additional and then i'm going to consider when are we going to draw these background colors do we want to have these lines first or do we want to have the background color first and afterwards the lines so in my case i want to make sure that the background colors at the back of the lines meaning that we draw the background color first then the grid lines and then the bars of our chart the reason why is because if you would have a solid color at the background these grid lines will be hidden so I want to make sure that the, that the grid lines are visible. So what I'm going to say here, I'm going to just say you draw before. So before anything else, draw these background, draw the background color first. And I'm going to say you chart, and then I'm going to put in here two more arguments. One is args for arguments, although we won't be using this one. And then the next one is the plugins option or plugin options. Although these two here are not necessary because they're directly linked with this. If you won't be using that so then what i'm going to do here is i'm going to grab this item here and we are going to use what we call a object destructuring these three are all objects however we're going to focus only on this one here if we do a console log you will instantly see what these objects are if i save here refresh open up developer tab and you can see here if i hover oh did i do something or is something not working let's save this again refresh all right, that's interesting. Something doesn't work. Just a minute. All right, my bad. I made a mistake here. It's not draw before. It's exactly the opposite. I should know that. Anyway, it's before drawing anything else. So if I save this now and refresh, there we are. We have now our desired object. So we're going to see here. And basically what I need here is, for example, the CTX, which is, if I click on this, and you can see if I hover over this here, pinpoints this specific canvas with the ID of my chart, which is correct because that is the ID name. And then next what I need here as well would be, uh, we can probably use here the chart area, which is this one here, where we get the pixel coordinates of our chart area. And again, if you want to understand this, I highly, highly recommend you, like in many other videos, to watch my understanding the chart area video. This is a very powerful tool to understand. So we're going to use this and then as well the scales, where we have the X and Y scales, but probably we'll only use the Y scale because we only have these values that we want to convert into pixels. So let's start with this. All right, so we're going to say here, constant, and then we're going to say here, curly braces equals chart, because this is an object destructuring. So instead of what we did here, where we had to go from chart to CTX, no, like that. I don't want to do that anymore. I want to use a shorthand, just say CTX, and it will instantly know it is chart.ctx because of, because of the uh, object destructuring we can do that now just say here ctx 
dot and another one would be the chart area and we're going to say here colon curly braces and then within here we're going to say top bottom left and right most likely we only use these two here because this here will be based on the x and y scale but anyway that's all right i'll just put it in here as an extra we can always remove them afterwards now we're going to get the scales and for the scales we will only need the y scale but as a, out of a habit x and y i'll just do that both just in case so now we have this and then what i want to do here is of course to start drawing so we're going to say yes ctx and then to draw something, we're going to say a CTX dot. And we're going to draw a rectangle, and a rectangle will be from here to, let's say, from 18 to 14. And then we want to get all to the end, completely like this. And this will be the color red. So what I'm going to say here, fill style. And this fill style is a string value, and this will be the color red. So fill style basically means a uh, shape with a background color included. So in this case, I'll get the color red here, which is the transparent red. Copy this, and remember it's a string value, so that's why you have it like that. There we are. The next one is ctx dot, and then we're going to check here is the fill rectangle. Basically here, we're going to draw the rectangle, and we're going to use here what we say here. This is the left, is the starting point, and then you have the top, so the left and top coordinates. And then we have here what we call here the width, and the height so how many pixels to the right are we going and how many pixels to the bottom so for example in our case we want to have here to here so let's get here the left or the, the the both of these sides here so the left and right side so basically we could say here even i realize we should have here the width that will be a worry uh, that will be useful for us now so i'm going to say here this one left is in this case exactly the same name here so we can maintain this if you would have some other term to use, then I would highly recommend you to give it a different name, like x left or something like that. So it will not be in conflict with this. But anyway, in this case, here we're fine. Next is here the width. That's exactly identical as well. So right now for this, I'll just say here 100, and I'm going to say the height would be 25. If I save this now and refresh, you can see here we get now the full width from left to right, and then we have 100 or at least this is 100 and then 25 pixels going down so that's our height so you can see here it starts nicely however i want to get this point here so luckily chart.js has a item here and that's why we have the y scale here they have a special command which starts with y and it's a dot and i'm going to say here get pixel for value and this value will be number 18. So if I do this and save this now, refresh, you can see here it jumps up and there we are. All right, so if we do this, then you might say, all right, you probably have to just do the same here. And then say only 14, for example. Save that, refresh, and then you will see we get, in the, we get something that we don't want. What is going on here? Well, basically what we get is the pixel coordinate. And remember, this item is supposed to be the width, of sorry, the height. And the pixel coordinate would be from here and here. It will calculate how much is these pixel coordinates. And that's not what we want. So that's why we have to now solve this tiny issue here. Basically, what we need to understand is the difference between this here. So that's what we're going to do now. So we're going to say here, what we want is, we're going to grab this. And then what I'm going to say here is copy that put in here and then minus that so if i save this refresh oh all right so that's not what i wanted sorry um what we need to do here is exactly the opposite which is 14 minus 18 why minus 18 and why not the opposite because you say this doesn't make any sense we're going to be in a negative the answer is no the reason why is if we start here at the top, this is the closest to the zero here. If you understand canvas numbering, this is why I'm going to re recommend you. And later on, I will show you the link of the video of understanding the chart area. This is zero, or at least the higher we go here, up is zero. And the more lower we go, we increase in pixels. So exactly the opposite logic is going to use here. The lower we go down, so number 14 has a higher amount of pixels compared to number 18. So this is the reason why we do exactly the opposite. So if I do this here now, now we get exactly the item we designed. 
All right, so now we have this, and you can say here, all right, to make the other items, would be just to duplicate this? Well, we can be a bit more uh, concise with our code, so that's what we're going to do here. I'm going to say a function. So we're going to create a function, and we can loop through this function multiple times. So I'm going to say a function, and let's say this function here, uh, let's give it a sim an easy name, let's say BG colors. All right, so I'm just being very non-creative here, very straightforward. And then what I want to do here is I want to grab all of this code, put it in here, give it a proper indentation here. And then what we're going to do here is start giving it uh, a proper value as well. So let's say here, I'm going to say bracket, low, comma, bracket, I, and then finally a color. So we have a color, and you can see basically these, these, and these two here needs to be adjusted. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to trigger this function by saying bg colors. And this here, I'm going to start putting the numbers in here. Bracket low would be number 14. So I'm going to put in a number 14. And then I'm going to say a comma, number 18. And then finally, comma, color will be this string value here. I'm going to cut out this here, color. And then what I'm going to do now is bracket low, put it in here. Bracket high, put it in there. And here, save, refresh, there we are. So now we have the first one, and then of course we can now duplicate this. And let's start to work on all of them. So the next one would be, uh, we have the red, and then I guess we have here maybe, the, let's say the center is the green color. So the green color is the fourth one here. I'm going to copy this. It will be the center. And then the center should be everything from four up to number 14. And then finally, we're going to grab here the yellow color, which is this color here. That's the third one. Copy that. Put it in here. And then we say here, 0 to 4. Save this. Refresh. There we are. So now we have here the green color, the red color, and the yellow color at the bottom. What we could do here as well, just for, for the sake of it, we're going to say ctx.restore to remove all default values. Save that. And then here maybe ctx.save to save all the upper values that we might need. Refresh here, and there we are. And now we have our background color like this. And if you want to make it a solid color, you will see that it will still show grid lines. And this is the difference with if you would say here, draw before, let's say, draw, uh, before data sets draw, if I save that. You can see here now the grid lines are basically gone except for this one here because of the transparency we have. So this is why this is very important. Let's put this back on transparency here. Save that. And there we are. So if you enjoyed this video and you have now a full understanding of how to do this, maybe you want to know really deeper into the chart area. This is extremely or really crucial to understand. So I'm going to recommend you this video here on understanding the chart area in ChartJS, which will help you even more in understanding how to do the Y skill and the X skill and everything regarding to the meaning of the chart area.